So as a next step, let's now take this instant availability we spoke about and apply it to um, a high availability case. In other words, I'm going to take my SQL Server and I'm going to simulate a disaster on that box. And then instead of restoring the data, which may take hours if your disk, your SQL database is large, um, I'm just going to fail over to my backups and start using my backups, if you will. So to show that functionality, let's look at my SQL Server first. Here's my SQL Server. It runs in VMware. Um, it can obviously be a physical server. I'm just using VMware because it makes it easy to do to show the bare metal recovery, which will be which will be um, discussed in the next section. But um, here's my SQL Server, and if you look at the server itself. It has on it, let's go to disk management, it has on it two drives, a C drive and a D drive. And it's the D drive that house the database. If you look at the D drive itself, there's my Microsoft SQL Server. And if you dig in, you can get to the database, the actual live database there. This is now my live database. So let's simulate a disaster. Let's delete the D drive. So before I do that, though, uh, what I'm going to do, just from experience, I am going to shut down the database, then delete the D drive, and then try to bring up the database. The reason I do it in that order is if you do not shut down the D, uh, the D drive and you delete the database drive itself, the D drive in this case, um, what's going to happen is that SQL will work out of cache and the database will take a while to shut down or die naturally. So just to speed it up a bit, let's go in stop the database itself so i'm going to stop the database service and this takes a, a while to do um, and as soon as this is done i will go to the d drive itself and then just delete the d drive so really i'm simulating a disaster i'm simulating a case where my either my local disk died or my sand drive died and um, i need to recover from that so as soon as the database is done there it's done it's shut down I am going now to my disk management, there's my D drive, and I'm going to delete the partition. And as soon as this partition is gone, we can now go in and fail over to my latest backup. I'm not going to do a full recovery, I'm just going to take the software and say, instead of restoring the data back to a new D drive, if you will, on this box, just use my latest backup as the live backup. And in that case, the, uh, the software will create a D drive on the box, bring up the SQL server, and the database runs off um, the, uh, the latest backup, if you will. So there you can see my D drive is gone. Let's now go to the software. And if I try to fire up or start up my SQL server, it is not going to start up. It's going to fail. You can see there it says the path not found. And at this point, my database is down. I have now simulated a disaster where I lost the drive. To use the instant availability to fix this problem, or at least help you out or push out your disaster, you go to the, res the, the restore window, go to the drive that you just lost, the D drive, go to the latest backup of that drive, right click, say map. Now in this case I'm mapping back to the SQL Server itself, and I'm going to map back to the D drive, the drive that I lost. So I'm not mapping back to a different server, different location that I showed earlier for testing purposes, I'm mapping back to the server that lost the D drive, the server that was hit with this disaster. And it takes um, a few seconds, and there you can see the successfully mapped message. And at this point, I can now go to my SQL server and start up the services. Because this server now has a D drive that's local to it. The D drive is not local to the box. It, doesn't, it appears to be local, but it's not physically in the server itself. It's actually sitting on the um, sitting on the the SAN sitting on my XRS server if you will the iSCSI SAN so you can see here there's my D drive that now popped up this two popped up and I can explore this and it looks like a normal local drive there's my SQL server and everything is up and running my SQL databases are up and running if I go to my databases um, I can go to the, the databases itself there's the marketing database and my sales database and I can connect and look at my tables um, all the information is there everything is there the only difference now is I'm not using my local drive to house or my sand drive to house my database my production data uh, or my production disk I'm using 
my backups, my XR server is now the source for this D drive that's mapped to this box. So what this buys you, it buys you time. It's not a long term, or it's not meant to be a long term solution. You're not going to run in this phase um, for weeks on end, but it does buy you time until you have um, the opportunity to fix the problem, to bring the data back to the local disk. And we have several ways of bringing that ba data back and syncing it up with the local disk itself. But this buys you time. This allows you to push out your disaster to a more convenient time. If it's 10 a.m. on a Monday morning, you don't have time for a SQL Server disaster at that point, no problem. Go to SyncSort, right-click, instant availability within 10, 15, 20 seconds, you're up and running and you just pushed out your disaster to say 10 p.m. on Monday night inside your maintenance window where you can then at, le at leisure just fix the problem and get the data back to the local disk. So just to recap what I've done here is just really uh, simulated disaster, simulated a case where my SQL server died on the box and I failed over to my, um, my latest backup. Now again, as I stated in the previous session, the changes I'm making here, or the changes that the SQL Server is making on this D drive, does not affect the backup. It, it doesn't change the backup or changes the integrity of the backup. That backup is read-only. It uses temp space on my XRS, on my secondary storage, to capture all those changes. And then later tonight, you can take all those changes and just synchronize it back with local disk inside your maintenance window. So as a next step now, and this will be the next session, let's now look at recovering the entire machine from scratch. In other words, I have a disaster where I not only lost the D drive, but I lost the C drive as well. So my machine is bare and I want to do a bare metal recovery or express DR operation on that um, bare machine.